Hello, it's Ryan Gordon. Um, part 9. And I'm going to preface this by saying this is either going to be your favorite episode or your least favorite episode. Because all we're doing today is refactoring. And I know that some people have been watching this and it's just driving them nuts that we're sticking all these globals up here. And we have just this gigantic main line, which is basically the whole program. We're going to try and fix some of that today. Um, and we're also going to fill in all these buttons with actual, like, Winamp skins. So this is going to be a lot of, like, you know, measuring things in this interface and then, you know, cleaning stuff up. So if this is the kind of thing that's going to drive you nuts, I get it. Uh, but we're going to, a lot of this code is going to move around, so please don't skip this episode if you can avoid doing so. Um, if you're into this sort of thing, if you like watching code get cleaned up, like you like watching, you, you like you like banging the chalkboard erasers out when you're in elementary school, it's going to feel good. It's going to be satisfying like that. So, okay, let's get started on this. All right, what are we going to do here? Let's see. Um, first things first, let's just break up the main line into a bunch of different things here. Um, so let's just try to split this up into the things we actually do, right? Everything. Init everything sounds like just a ridiculous function name, but that's lots of programs I've written have that as a thing. So um, if not init everything, return one, like it fails. We'll make sure this calls panic and abort. So this will probably, well, okay, let's come back, come back, come back. We'll panic and abort on issues. Yeah, sure, why not? All right, so that's gonna get, let's get all our initialization stuff into there so it's not in our main line anymore. Cool. And I don't think we're checking the command line right now, but it's always good in your initialization function to have access to it in case you want it later. Init everything. In arc C, char pointer, pointer arg V. This could be const, we're not going to change it, right? And you know, let's not fly too close to the sun here. All right, so let's get rid of this. Dun -dun -dun, desired. Yep, okay, let's make sure we don't use that anywhere else. We don't. Okay, good, that can stay in there. And then if we're still alive, these have all the panic and aborts, so that's fine. Uh, these skin buttons are going to go away, but. Let's see, and everything, ba -ba bum All this UI is going to go away. In fact, why don't we do that first before we do anything else? Yeah, let's do that first. Okay. Um, what do we have up here? Audio file stuff, this. Okay, all the way at the top here. Right below. Let's just do it at the top. Why not? Okay. Time to build some data structures. This one, Winamp skin, and Winamp skin is going to have. It's going to hold our textures for us. Uh, main. We'll just call it main if, for now. Let's not call it main. Let's call it text main. That seems better. Text C buttons. And we'll, we'll probably store these somewhere else too, but just so we have a definite, definitive place we can delete the, we can free these from later. It's useful to have them in one central authoritative place. Okay, um, we're gonna need, uh, see, and this is, this is the danger we're about to run into, but we're gonna start, we're gonna just gonna run at this windmill like Don Quixote. We're gonna say, Winamp skin button. Um, we're going to try our best not to build a GUI toolkit here, but we do need some basic structure because there's going to be lots of push buttons and we don't want them to be... We don't want to have to write and copy and paste code for each of these because I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, probably more over here. I mean, there's a lot of buttons, so we're going to try and generalize this a little bit without writing a whole GUI toolkit. Um, this will hold the texture... Do not own this pointer. Don't free it. Um, 
this is just going to be a copy of one of these, so each button will have access to this texture without having to, you know, go find this in the Winamp scan. And also, there will be buttons that are not part of this initial bitmap here, so just so they have a copy, it's nice to have that. They're going to need an SDL rect, which is our. Where'd you go? C buttons. Let's see. This guy right here. Um, we're going to want to have a rectangle that says in, within this texture which one's the unpush button and the pushed button so we can find those. Rect, source rect, unpressed, and source rect pressed. Just like that. And of course, dust rect, which will be where it is. Not in this bitmap, but where it should be drawn into this one over here into the main window. Um, and, you know, just whether it's pressed at the moment or not, I think that'll do it. And then we just need win amp skin button. And the, the, the skin object will hold all these buttons, so. Alright, now what are they? Okay, it's previous, play, pause, stop next, I guess, and eject. We'll start with that. That's what's in the C buttons bitmap. And obviously we'll be adding others as we go along. Uh, these are not pointers. These are just actual structs in the struct, so there's no no star there. Previous, play, pause, stop, next. Oh, and eject. That'll cover me. You know, though, actually... Alright, I hesitate to do this, but we're going to do it. Win amp skin button. Blah, every C and num has to have a ridiculous prefix on it, right? Previous... These start at zero, but I like to put it for the first one because, I don't know, that's just me. Play... Actually, it would have been smart. Pause. Stop. Next. Eject. And total. Fun trick if you are a C programmer. Let me win amp skin button ID. Why not? Um, fun trick if you are a C programmer. You start this at zero, which it probably does by default anyway, but just in case I like to put the zero there. And then you do all the possible enums, and then you just make the last one total. And this will, by default, the C compiler will convert this into the total number of things minus total, which is super useful for the thing we're about to do here. Winamp skin button buttons. Winamp skin button total. There, now we have an array of buttons that matches the total number of things in this enum. So there will be one button object for in this array for each uh, button we define up in this thing. So that will be useful because it'll be nice to have an ID that we can reference buttons by so that we don't have to cut and paste code for play and then previous and blah blah blah. blah. Um, we could just you know look for that specific thing and iterate over it in a for loop and stuff like that. Okay, good. So now we need to load a skin, I guess. So um, where are we at here? Okay, so in init everything right now at the somewhere in here we have this thing where we're loading a couple of things. Let's let's generalize this too and say load skin. For now, we'll just do this. Fix me. Real thing, because I am not yet ready to mess around with paths to like split this up and reassemble it and stuff. We're gonna do that later. <clears throat> so let's just leave that as a quotation mark thing for now, and we will, uh, yeah, take all this stuff, take this thing too, load skin, not load skin. and abort, fail to 
reload skin initial skin which by the way if a program tells you to fail to load the initial skin that sounds incredibly creepy so we're going to leave that without any further explanation for the time being and we'll try to make sure that whatever that fails doing it'll return false and hopefully the error will be set for it or we'll set it ourselves if it doesn't make sense otherwise okay so let's get up here static void what I call it load skin Come back. Here we go. Const char pointer f name. Call it f name. We'll call it f name for now. Fix me. Use this variable. Okay. Let's get our semicolon out of there. Curse of death when copying and pasting. Um. Okay. So what we want to do. You know what, let's win amp skin pointer skin like that. And that'll be we'll have success or failure, but this is the thing it's going to fill in. So um Yeah, let's do that. So SDL zero P. Now we did SDL zero before for a structure, but zero P says do it to a pointer. And since it's some macro magic, it knows that if you're a pointer it should be uh zeroing out, not the size of skin, but the size of a dereference of skin. That's small distinction, but you see that that's what that is. So we're going to zero that thing out, and then we're going to because that thing has got more than just, this is just a single button here. Let's get the actual thing, Winamp skin. Let's bring this along too, so we know what the heck we're doing. Okay. Skin, and this is button. These are not meant to be line labels. These are just notes to myself for now. Um, okay, so we want to load those. Skin text main equals, and again, fix me hard coded. We're going to change these to be not hard coded later and use f name, but we're not there right now. We're just refactoring what's here already. And now we're skin text C buttons. Now I'm going to try this. This may be a terrible idea of it. We're going to choose to not care if these don't load and I'll tell you why later on but let's get through this first. So if those fail we don't care. It's okay for them to be null. True. Okay. Apparently my Wi-Fi just died. We don't care. Okay. Um, so So in the skin, in the contents of the skin, these are set. We have to deal with the buttons now. And there's a lot of them. And this calls for macro salsa. So let's do that. Define init winamp button skin button. And we need some things here. So, well, we'll worry about that in a second. Okay, so. What are we going to do here? We need to initialize everything in this button. Okay, let's do this after we load the textures so that when we set up this button's texture thing, here we can get rid of, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so when we come in here, let me skin buttons, and then the button it is. This is going to be a macro, so I'll so say it's this button. Yeah, okay. It'll be that, and then skin button. Let's do this, actually. Win amp skin button. You're wondering why in a macro I would wrap it in a thing like this. It's because I'm about to declare a local variable, so... When amp skin button pointer button equals this, so that we don't have to type out this gobbledygook for every line of this. It's a macro. Don't forget to chain end each line with one of those, so the macro continues like that. See how it turned green? That's how the text editor helps you. Okay, so button has a texture equals text. We're gonna make that a thing here. Text equals and this will get replaced because it's macro magic. So, 
but rather than type that each time, we'll do that. Skin text. Well, actually, it's just do text. That's fine. Does not matter. Um, okay, so that'll take care of texture. Check. Source rec unpressed. Okay, so button source racked unpressed. And this is going to have xy width and height. x equals source x unpressed. I know, the macros are terrible because you end up just cramming in stuff like this. Source y unpressed, because that'll be our next line. Nope, come back. There you go. Unpressed y. Source y unpressed, okay. And then width and height will be, these do not change between all these things, so we just need a simple width and height like that. Let's put that after the texture though. Yeah, okay. So just be width, mm hmm, and height, yep. And then let's do the same thing again, but with pressed. Cool. All right, but this should be source pressed, and then same width and height. If you're all cringing in this macro, welcome to being a C developer. Sometimes you just have to do this for things where you're repeating yourself over and over again. Um, do, 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 do. I mean, I guess we could make it a function, but, you know, sometimes it's not, compactness is nice. So, uh, And I might change my, my mind in a moment and be like, oh, this is terrible. What are we doing? Okay, dy. Okay, so then we need the destination rect. Rest, dust rect. Cool. Right? Yeah, okay. This be dx, dy, and same width and height again. Okay, so all that gobbledygook. Well, honestly, we probably could just make this a function. Let's let's just do that. That's fine. Um yeah, why not? It's uglier. It's less ugly than this, so we'll do it. Static void. Steal inline. Can we do that? Why not? I mean, I hope your compiler can figure out this should be inline, but who knows? Um, init skin button. Win amp skin button pointer button. SDL texture that should be there. What else do I have in here? A whole bunch of stuff. And these are all ints, so const int with const int height. Oh, this is getting long. Hang on. Okay. And const int SYU. Why not? Why not? Let's just do it. Why you? The other one's SXU. Sucks to be you. Okay, good. And let's do same thing with P, same thing with P, and then same thing with destination. Are we having fun yet? Alright, here we go. Yeah, why not? Let's just do it. It's fine. Okay, so we don't need to do this anymore because this is going to be coded elsewhere. Okay. Load skin. So now we're gonna do this in a moment. In it, let's get one of these written out real quick. Skin button. Address of that. I mean Yeah, why not? Let's just do it. I think if we were being really creative we probably could have dumped all this stuff into a static const SDL rect that just mem copies the whole thing, but for the sake of, I don't know, we're doing it this way, so. Um, yeah, okay, let's do it. Where are you at? Okay, here we go. Again, that's just a note. That probably won't compile because you can't use a num as a 
thing, but okay. It's previous. We're gonna do it to this thing. We're gonna do well we need these values now. But okay. So the button is there, so we don't need these anymore. So source max equals that. This is fine. I was using a macro so we could do these one per line, but we can actually break this down to a function call that's one function call per line. And that will work just as well. Better, because you get a little less macro salsa in there. Yeah, okay, here we go. Cool, and that just does that. Okay, width and height and blah, blah, blah. I think that's okay. And for completeness, let's put pressed in here, although we already called zero P on this, so this should be that, but you know, why not? Stay all false. Okay, um, so let's init a skin button here. Let's see, so previous, and also let me make sure I have these in the right order because now I can't see them up here. Here we go, okay. Um, okay, so the texture is gonna be skin, text C buttons, because it's all in that texture that we load, and then we need the width and height, so now we gotta get back into this thing. I'm gonna go, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, so previous is this guy. Let's blow this up, because look at that, I grabbed an extra pixel I shouldn't have. There we go, and two of them, actually. Okay, so... Position 1688, and the size is 2318. So 2318, because width and height was first, and then the position... Well, okay, that's in the destination. Let's, for the sake of argument, let's do the destination first because then we can cut and paste this. We can copy this in the order we're actually going to get it from GIMP. So width and height is that. Destination is 1688. This is the part, the boring part. I warned you was coming. All right, now we need C buttons, and this one is. Unpressed is 0, 0, because it's the top left corner of that bitmap. And the pressed one is still at 0 and presumably at 18. Is that right? Yeah, 18. Okay. All right, that's a button. Good. Let's do the rest of these real quick. The nice thing is that some of these we can get through pretty quickly because this row here is always 18 pixels down. Until you get here, little sneaky jerks. Um, that one's actually a little smaller. And I think also, yeah, this one's a pixel shorter. Why did they do that? That was a silly thing to do. Okay, well, whatever. It's fine. We can all survive this. But the first couple of these are all in the right place. So so we know that the when we do all these buttons, that it's going to be previous, play, pause, stop, next, and eject. Let's get these in there. All right, so we know the second row is always at 18 until the eject button, which is very annoyingly at 16. Okay, so let's get that in there. And let's see here. So all these, the destinations are going to change. We'll do those in this. Let's do those first since we're here. Where'd you go? There you go. Okay, so this goes, oh man, just did it again, hang on, okay, get you there, get you there, all right, 2318, 23, these are all the same until you get here, and this guy's shorter, but, okay, okay, so these are at the same place, they just move ahead by, let's see, I'm at 16, and then they move ahead by 23 each time, right, yeah, okay, so, so it's 1688 and then 3988. Can't do this math, it's too late at night for me. I'm an old man. 62. And then 85. And then 108. And this eject button was, or this next button, not on yet next, actually is only 22 by 18. I don't know why they made that one shorter. That's pretty annoying. 22 by 18. Uh, let's see what the 
other one is the eject button. The eject button is also 22, but it's 22 by 16. Deeply annoying. Okay, fine. And it's at 136.89. 89 because it's also a pixel shorter on both sides how infuriating okay um so we did that and so that's the width that's the x going across these do not change until the eject button which we fixed okay so those are good now we just need to go back in here and fix this row here to be correct okay so right yeah okay all right, so this is these are all until you get to this last booger over here, 23 by 18. They're all in, they all start at 18 and then they go across 23, zero, 23, and then 46. Okay. So size test zero zero. And this is, okay, so that 18. Okay, so then 23. What did I say the next one was? 46. Sixty-nine. Don't say nice, don't say nice. And then this guy is also smaller. He's at 92. 92. 18, but he is smaller, but we already adjusted the width. And then the eject button, to be a giant jerk, is smaller in both directions. So this one, we already did the width, but this one goes 114.0. Did I not do that? Okay, so it's width, height, destination. Okay, we didn't do those yet. I'll do those. And then whatever this guy is down here, he goes... They didn't even give you the gap there. They just packed it tight. Okay. 114, 16 for the pressed version. Yeah, okay. 114, 16, 22, 22, 16. Did I measure that wrong? Oh, I think I did. 22, 16. What is it over here? Twenty-two sixteen. Measured it wrong. Shame on me. Oh no, I measured it right. I just did it on the wrong one. There we go. No, wait. Forgot to measure it. Okay, fine. It's good. It's fixed. So we just gotta go through and do one more row of these, and we're done with these dumb buttons for now. Okay. Come here. Give me this guy. Twenty-eight minutes into this, you having fun still? I told you this is going to be a rough one, but we're going to make so much progress here. It's going to be insane. Okay, so this one goes zero zero. Check. This guy goes. Wait, am I too low on that? I am. Tisk tisk. Okay. And this guy goes twenty three zero zero zero. Yeah, twenty three zero because these are all on the top, so. The y coordinate zero on all of these. 46, same ones as before. Okay, 23, 46, 69, 92, and 114. Okay, well, that was an enormous amount of effort just to fill in some magic numbers, but it's done now. That should match. These are all done. Those are all done. Okay, we're there. Good. Yay. Okay, so now we theoretically have skin we need here and knit everything we are currently going to keep the skin as a global variable though just for now static win amp skin skin why not sure these are going to get pulled into the skin eventually but we're not ready to do sliders tonight uh, audio stuff's going to stay global for now we'll fix that later maybe i don't know i haven't decided okay so Um, okay, so we have that, we have that, we have a skin we can set up, we're just going to say init everything when we get down here, we're going to say load skin, give it the address of skin, which is a global, um, 
Uh, we panic and abort if we can't load the skin, but there is no place it actually fails right now because we don't care if the textures load, and we'll get to that later. But for now, it's good to have the panic and abort in there. We open that, we set everything up, we open the all file. Cool, okay. We've initialized everything. We can get rid of a bunch of this stuff now. Goodbye, paused state. Goodbye, rectangles of stuff. The volume knobs have to stay for now, except I'm going to comment them out because honestly, they're not worth anything right now. Whether the buttons pause, that's up in our Winamp skin. We can get rid of that. Keep going can stay. Um, we're going to have some fun with this in a moment. This stuff can stay for now. Oh, okay, let's move drawing out to something else. Draw frame. Renderer. Is renderer global? It is. All right, we're going to make this not global pretty soon. But for now, let's let's do it, because there's like load texture uses it, so we'll keep that for now. But let's try to strive to get that to not be global anymore. Renderer, skin, even though that's global, we'll pass it through here too. Yeah, okay. So all this junk's leaving our main line. It's going to become just draw frame by itself. And that can just stay there and look cute. Okay. skin. I'm probably not getting this day because we're already at 31 minutes and not even close to done here so we'll just make a note to have a add a function to free the Winamp skin that we've created. But for now let's leave it be. Come back. Static void. We don't care if this fails for any reason. Draw frame. The renderer we're going to draw to and the Winamp this can probably, well I don't know, this is Winamp skin that we're going to draw to. Skin. Okay. Um, let's have this thing clear to black. I'm going to show you why in a moment. Zero. Okay. So every frame you clear it, we're going to clear it to black. Full alpha. Draw the skin. Uh, the the. Draw the background, the main texture, which is you know the background image across the whole thing. We're going to do. Okay, we're going to get rid of that in a second. And now we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have this thing right here. Here we go. So in here, instead of trying to draw each individual thing, like see how we have this thing, rewind, stop, pause. A lot of these weren't even hooked up yet. We're going to do this. For... You can do an in, inside... You can declare an integer inside a for loop, but for... Portability purposes, in case you're on a really old compiler, we'll just clear it outside of it for now. For i equals zero, well, i, here comes a magic macro that's super useful. SDL array size, skin buttons, which eventually will just give you this, but in case we change that, i plus plus. This does some magic with the size of the whole array divided by the size of one element in it, so we can tell you how many items are in the array. Uh, and that the compiler will dither that down to uh, with constant folding down to an actual like it's not a mathematical equation that runs every loop it'll get hard coded by the compiler if the compiler is worth anything at all all right so inside here we're gonna draw each button we're gonna call that a function too skin buttons i renderer that okay and then we can get rid of all of this and then render present to flip it to the screen put the bits in the actual window okay so let's draw these buttons real quick and I'm gonna now you're gonna see why we don't care if these textures are null or not draw button win amp skin button So, and by the way, this is why we did not, this is why we kept the texture, a copy of the texture pointer inside each button object so that we can not have to pass the skin around. And also different buttons will have different textures as this gets more complicated. So that'll solve that problem to have a copy of it was useful in this case. Okay, so if button texture equals null, if the texture didn't load for any reason, or it just wasn't like they forgot to put a bitmap in the skin or something, we are going to SDL set render draw 
color to uh, let's do red for now. None of these are going to show up uh, because these this bitmap happens to have everything we need, unless we change a name or something like that. Um, do that, and then SDL render. What did I call that thing before? Is it SDL render fill rec? I gotta make sure I get that right. Render fill rec. Where you at? Come on, where are you? Killing me here. Okay. Oh, well, I could have figured. I could have told you that. Render fill rec. Yeah. Renderer. This needs a renderer too. Whoops. Okay. Renderer and then button dest rect. So if the texture isn't there, we're just going to fill in a red square where it should be. So there's no need to just panic and give up if it isn't there. We'll, we'll still try to just stumble along if we have a bug or if the skin is damaged or part of it is missing or any other number of things that could go wrong. Otherwise, if there's an actual texture, we will steal render copy. Copy. Well, well, okay, this is getting complicated at this point. Hang on a second, because there's one other thing I forgot. Const steal bool pressed. Button pressed, just so we don't have to keep typing this. Okay, so if it's pressed, then we'll do it in red, blue, green. We'll do it in green if they're pressed, if they're holding it down, and we'll do it in red otherwise. And that's just as a, as a fallback if the actual texture isn't there. In this one, okay, so we're going to copy renderer. button texture uh, and we need to know if it's if it's pressed we're going to use button source rec rect pressed otherwise we will use button source rect unpressed and then we always draw it to the same place okay so that should do that all right, how are we doing here? Let's see. Draw the frame every time. Good. I wonder how much of this is global. Probably all of it. Okay, let's, just while we're here, let's slide this thing out of here. Feed more audio. I think all that's global for now, so we'll just do that. Just so it's not in the main line anymore. Static void more audio there just to get it out of there we'll see if I regret this I don't know if I explained this the uh, converted buffer thing this was I made this static because generally people consider it a poor piece of practice to put 32 kilobytes on the stack um, in reality that's not a big deal in modern times in older times it was disastrous so like, if you're on, like, Mac OS 9, this would probably be the death of your program if this wasn't static. Um, it can still be bad if you run out, if you make a really genuinely big one, but uh, most Linux systems by default have, like, an 8 megabyte stack. You're not going to run out in case you fall into it, unless you fall into an infinite recursion. So, um, and at that point, you're basically screwed. But I would say, you know, defensive coding and coding small is always a good idea. So, okay, so this is the feed more audio thing. It's just the same thing that was there before, but now it's in its own function, and we don't have to mess with that. We might want to feed this other parameters eventually, but for now it's good. So that gets that out of the way, and the main line's getting smaller. We should really put this in a loop somewhere, to, uh, put this in a function somewhere too, but I think for now we're going to leave that here. Um, okay, so there's one more thing we need to do here. We're not messing with the sliders right now. This is just, in fact, hang on, let's figure out what sliders we have. Those are just going to stay there. Yeah, okay. We're going to ignore all sliders for now because I have the rectangles commented out. So this can just go away and we'll put that back in next time. And now we need to come in here, mouse button up, mouse button down. And in here, we're currently checking, is it in the pause rectangle, is it in the rewind rectangle, is it in the stop one? We're going to generalize this a little bit. B 
because as you can re remember from up here, we have a for loop we can do on this now. So pressed and we know the point, so now we're gonna go through each button and say, is this point inside the current button where the mouse is clicking or unclicking? Skin, uh, let's do button, button. Win amp skin button, button equals dress of skin, buttons, I. Okay, cool. So now we can just do button. If this is in the destruct, where it would be on the screen. This is no longer necessarily the rewind button. We're going to get to that. So if we're there, then the button, remember in this button, we added press things. So we can keep track of when a button is pressed or not. Button pressed equals um, oh, you know what? Hang on a second here. We want to change the press thing even if we're not in it right now. So we want to know pressed equals if we are in the rectangle and the button is pressed down on this click. If we just clicked it in this event. No, that's not right. We don't want to do that. Um, yeah, actually, I think that's OK. So it'll stay pressed until you bring the mouse button up, in which case, if it's not, if the mouse button's coming up, it'll clear all the buttons presses, which is what you want. But if you hold the mouse button, if you hit the mouse button down inside of one of these, then it'll count as pressed. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's right. I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. Pressed and we're in the point. Yeah, okay, so. Cool. And then we want to know if in this frame, if button, if this button was pressed in this frame. And then you want to decide what you want it to do. Because all these actions, pausing and rewinding and stuff like that, these only we only want these to happen if this is a new press in this frame. So um, and this is where we really do need to break this out into a different thing, but we're gonna win amp skin button ID I case when amp skin button uh, previous was rewind I guess and now we will see we're getting crazy indents here so we're gonna want to refactor this later but it's getting super late so we're just gonna do one of these things for now cool okay and that's the end of that so let's not forget to put a break in there and then we're gonna do the same thing here Next thing is the pause button. And we have other buttons we're not hooking up tonight because it's getting super late. And this will deal with whether we are paused or not. Did I get rid of the pause thing? I think I did. Let's put that back in for now. As a yeah, static SDL bool paused equals SDL true for now because we need that Oh, we don't need that up there. Okay, that does not need to be global. I take it back. We'll put that up at the top here for now. Doesn't have to be static. We'll move that stuff around too, I think. But for now, that's good. And then break, of course. And then one more of these, because we have the stop button too. Case, I'm skin button, stop. I feel like I'm racing the clock now, just because we're really it's getting late now, so. But we moved a lot of stuff around, so we're gonna see what this looks like when we're done here. Okay, switch, cool. Okay, so that handles things if the button was pressed. Close out that if. Close out this for loop. At the end of this for loop, all these buttons should be pressed should either, one of them is probably true, the rest are all false, or all of them are false. But that'll take care of that. And then we can and then we'll break out. Okay, and then if one of them was clicked, we'll handle a specific thing. For now, that's fine. We're going to move that. The sliders are gone for the time being, so we're going to leave this comment out. You still drop a file on there. Feed more audio like we normally do. Draw a frame. 
deinit everything, because why not? Static void dn dinit everything. And this is just all the stuff we're doing at the end to clean up things, so... Um, and those are all globals right now, and we might adjust this later, but that's fine for now. Gets it out of the main line. Um, we should probably just get rid of that for now and rebuild that later, but that's fine for now, I guess. We could... I think this is enough for now. That's fine, but as you can see, our main line is becoming more manageable. You know what? I don't know. Let's just see if it'll compile if we move this out, so... Take all this stuff out of here. Keep going. Keep going. Equals handle events. Let's do that. That's fine. Static void handle events. Void. Just moving stuff out of the main line. That's all we're doing right now. See, it's going to take me an hour just to re-indent this. Again, this is one of the things I've really always hated about this text editor. One of the few things I secretly love this thing more than, you know, life itself. Did I say secretly? Actually, just in reality, I just love this thing more than life itself. All right, let's see. Almost done. Oh yeah, pause is going to be a thing. All right, that's fine. It still feels like progress. We're just going to make pause a global for now and call it a day. But impressed. We need to know the skin. That's what we need. Hang on. Yeah, okay. Oh gosh, stop. Okay. Doot, 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 doot. Did you ever see that movie You Got Mail where Tom Hanks is, uh, he types some big dramatic email to someone that says the whole thing's a terrible idea and you just watch him sit there and hit the backspace key like 80 times and you're like, why didn't you just like hit control A and delete just one time? But you know, I mean, you wouldn't expect Tom Hanks, uh, Jeff Bezos clone prickhead kind of guy to do that, but you know, it's... Okay, the funny thing also about refactoring is that you end up adding a bunch of fix me's <laughs> instead of taking them away. It's just how life is. And this thing I definitely want to move out to a little bit more because this is still pretty darn bulky. But now our main line fits on one screen, so and even more once I get rid of this thing. But, you know, this is definitely progress here uh, in terms of cleaning things up and refactoring. Do something with this. Okay, um... What are the chances this thing still runs? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, that should be tip fat and static. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's compile it and see what it does. Okay. A couple of these things. Return SDL false. Don't keep going. You don't have to break because there's a return there. True, because this thing checks. Keep going. Well, yeah, we don't need to keep going anymore. Look, it got even smaller. Look at that. Okay, um, let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, that should be a First of all, compiling is for getting to declare variables, but we're just going through it. Oh. Win amp skin pointer skin. Right? Right.
All right, and we have not handled some of these buttons because they're not hooked up yet, so that's okay. But otherwise it compiled, so. Okay, look at this progress. An hour of this nonsense. And now we are exactly where we were, except we have buttons all wired up here. And they click when you click them. Watch, the, watch this button closely. See how it's actually has a press down animation? That's pretty good. They all have it, even though most of these are not hooked up. Oh. I confused it. All right. That's okay. I know. Okay, there's a bug. Good. Okay, well, I know. Stream's invalid. I get it. Okay, progress. Definite progress today. And we have a long way to go, but besides the fact we managed to hook these buttons up to them to a nice generic thing where they're all set up and they all render correctly, and we have some work to do on that still, but... Oh, for crying out. Come here. Okay, there we go. Um, but now we're, we've made this code manageable. We ate a lot of vegetables today. We are full of vegetables. And we've moved some stuff around. We've made it a little more clear. We've made things a little more abstract. We um, have some fallbacks, so we handle things more robustly. We have some data structures defined so that uh, we don't have all these things hard-coded all over the place. I think this is a lot of progress. I think this is really good. It just took us 52 minutes to do it. So um, it's progress. We're getting there. I think this is a good time to stop uh, before my throat falls out from all this talking. And all right, good. Um, yeah, I guess that's good. Next time we will uh, start hooking up those buttons and actually make some progress on making this thing work like a media player again, now that we've cleaned up a bunch of messes that we've been building up as technical debt. Um, we will try not to do this again, where we spend an enormous amount of time refactoring things, but um, as you sat here for an hour watching this, I think it's worth remembering every time you write a Fix Me, that sooner or later, after you write enough Fix Me's, you have to stop and take an hour to clean them up before they collapse on top of you. So um, I hope you've learned a lesson. I feel like I have. And, um, you know... Uh, sometimes progress it just looks like a couple of button clicks. And that's all you can get sometimes, so we'll take it. All right, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.